Well, hello there, friends, and welcome to the virtual show, the only late night VR talk show that I know of. I'm your host, Wes. With me, as always, my good friend, Roots. Roots, I don't know about you, brother, but for me, it's been a good few days of VR. Yeah, it has actually been a couple of good days of VR. Good days of uh, sunshine for me. Well, actually, it's been off and on sunshine, snow, then sunshine. A uh, very bizarre weather. Radio runs in a house right off the bat. And uh, yeah, no, it's been a good good couple of days, good VR. It's Absolutely. been hot here. It was a bit little warm. I had actually today was the first time in a long time that uh, my lenses kept fogging up. Like Ooh. I almost couldn't use my G2 mm. because the thing sits so tight to my face that uh, it would just kept steaming up. It was, it was hot, bro. Oh, that's crazy. I guess that they say that's what the, the temperature of the uh, equipment maybe is is uh, warmer than the room or vice versa. I don't know what the hell that's. Unless there's some kind of weirdness with that. But uh, that's one thing we need to get get ready in our heads, right? Is that summer's coming and uh, we're going to be bitching about it being too hot. And, uh, you know, you get everything that comes with it. So make provisions now huh yeah. like get, get get your acs and your fans ready because it's coming bro and it's not going to wait for you and your uh cosmo dread or whatever it is you're playing <laughs> absolutely not well and then you just might have to alter your gameplay you know maybe do it early morning or uh i know there's sometimes i just felt like i didn't want it on my face but i definitely need to get an ac unit in this room or something for sure yeah man gotta figure that that window puzzle out huh yeah yeah absolutely yeah man uh gonna talk some cosmo dread here in just a minute i want to go ahead and say up front here uh this one's kind of on the fly guys we didn't really expect to be talking about this one tonight we, we thought that this would be a next week game but um one of our fellow content creators i'm not sh quite sure who mm -hmm. jumped the gun on the embargo so uh it's it's open season now the uh the developer white door games have given us all uh their blessing to uh, go ahead and talk about the game so that's exactly what we're going to do but um not quite as far along as i would have been had we been having this talk next week and we we may actually end up revisiting it next week uh if something changes drastically uh as i progress further into the game yeah you're right because i was not um anticipating playing that. i mean like you even said you said well i guess it is on because somebody broke the embargo and we can do it now um but i hadn't even jumped into it yet because i figured well what's the difference you know i can't talk about it anyway and then uh and then so we're both scrambling to to get in there um i didn't get as much time as i'd like in there but i did get several um several rotations as well and it you know uh i won't even go i guess i guess it's gonna just start talking about it but we're not at that point yet so yeah we'll get there in just a second i just want to right off the top uh say thank you to uh white door games and sergio hidalgo for granting roots and i uh review access roots uh is going to be talking about the native quest version right and and i'm talking about the uh the steam version so i'm gonna, i'm kind of interested to hear what you have to say about it uh like you i haven't gotten as quite as far as i would have liked but uh, i got a good piece of gameplay in here and i'm i feel like i made it fairly deep into it uh i hope i didn't <laughs> but i feel like i did so uh, uh anyway we'll, we'll get to that in a minute before all of that we need to kick it off the way we always do by saying hello to our friends in chat and uh, i see a couple of uh regulars and i see a couple of not so regular so i'd like to say welcome to lee vr thanks for showing up onakazi and uh, gamer chip showing up as they always do jarillo making an appearance what's up bro drink one for me uh radio runt traveling man the ogs here the rider dies in the house roots and uh luke martin says nice was curious what you guys thought Sugarhead Gaming said that this was the best game since Saints and Sinners. And I'm wondering what he's talking about. Is he talking about Onslaught? Is he talking about Crashland? Or is he talking about Cosmo Dread? Uh, because I could say right off the top, none of them are in the league with Saints and Sinners, although they're all good in their own ways. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be invoking the name of Saints and Sinners with any of these titles. I would assume 
he's uh talking onslaught and uh <laughs> that just makes me laugh oh um, <laughs> Uh, I saw that comment right off the bat. I went to went to comment back, and he wasn't there. It was like before the show, and I was like, "Damn it!" Because I, I, you know, what's the point of me writing a comment that he may or may not see? Uh, he may just come back and listen to it at a different time. So, I assumed he was talking about Cosmo Dread because that's the new release. That's kind of the headline in, in the in the uh, title line. Uh, it was Cosmo Dread. Um, I gotta say, Roots. I liked Cosmo Dread. I, I'm liking it so far. Not sure. Uh, well, I'm, I'm certainly it, it's not as as deep a game as Saints and Sinners. Uh, I'm not sure it's my favorite game that we're covering this week. Oh, really? Oh, well, so actually, that doesn't surprise me because uh, one of the games we're talking about, I just knew when I was playing it, with as much as I enjoyed it, that it was going to be something that would just be right up your alley, but. No, I thought this was pretty cool. I don't know how many um how many monsters you came in contact with. Uh, you know, I three. I thought, three? Okay. I thought it was three very- different. No, no, like three different kinds of monsters. Uh generally probably ten to fifteen total monsters. Okay. I got to a point last where I don't know what happened, but um there was like they just kept coming. They were everywhere. I it was like, what is happening? Because you know, you think, okay, I'm gonna see one or two or three or four or five or six and i'm like what and they were like multiple different kinds i was scrambling i didn't have much (laughs) i didn't have many weapons yeah dude i'm jealous now man i'm jealous because i never found anything like that um look i played this game for about 90 minutes before the show and uh i died twice all right and once was right off the bat like five minutes in the game I got killed. So the the other hour plus was one run. And like I made it, I felt like I made it pretty deep, but I never encountered anything like that. Mm. Uh, I think the most enemies I saw in one room uh, were three. And it was those little creepy hand things with the, eye. you know what I'm talking about? Like the spider octopus thing looking thing. Never saw it. <laughs> really? I think, I'm thinking there's quite a few enemies, man. I, you know, one of the things that i thought was kind of cool is when i died because i died a few times but when you die it tells you okay this is the type of uh monster you died to like one of them it was telling us like a big eyeball or something i don't know what the hell it was but it was telling me that you know hey that you could have left that one alone basically there's okay. uh there's certain ones that um this one in particular didn't uh like isn't gonna mess with you unless you mess with it type yeah. of thing that that was the first one when i died in five minutes it was that thing that killed me it was uh it too, right that's what killed yeah me. i saw it and i started blasting it and uh i didn't i didn't last very long after i started messing with it okay well, uh, well it hit me first it did hit me first i was i was next to it though oh okay no i opened the door and it was right there you know one of the things that when well, of course we knew this was going to be the case after dread halls and we've mentioned it before about the noises and stuff there's all sorts of noises and creeps and creep you know you're here i'm here and stuff like there's something there all the time and there's nothing there and then all of a sudden there is something there um and that's what the creepiness about it uh one of the things i thought was kind of cool is it's constantly you know you can't really i mean you're you have this whole place to explore it's procedurally generated right you got the map um i don't know i couldn't i don't couldn't pull up a map in between maybe you figured out how to do that Um, no it's just the uh the uh the draw as you go map on your wrist it kind of tells you if you've been in a room before uh, or not i didn't see i didn't see the map on my wrist but i so i just kind of went around and was roaming around but um i thought it was pretty you know i did maybe a quarter of the map so maybe that's why you went through a little bit more but um I was gonna say how oh, do you know how much of the map that you that you went through because it said uh at one point when i finished it said it said 25 percent or a quarter of the map or i could see like the map you... it shows you at the end the map that you've done like the section that you went through and then the rest of the uh, I, I, did, I didn't i didn't see anything like yeah, that see, yeah you saw the wrist i saw maybe together we both have the, the maybe experience. I don't maybe know. just possibly we're playing two different versions of this game yeah maybe it's different on quest than it is on steam i didn't see any of this dude um 
Hmm. Did did you ever make it through a run without dying, or, or or did you get killed every time? No, I mean I died every time. I mean, uh, and uh, don't judge me for that, by the way. Um, oh, I died every time too. <laughs> it just happened to be twice, you know. Yeah. Well, um, I thought one of the things I think is cool is the, the I was saying is it kind of keeps you moving, right? You can't just chill. You can't just chill out in one room for a while because you're running out of oxygen. You know, so you're constantly have to be moving or you're going to end up running out of oxygen things to find, right? Um, I'm assuming there's only so many. I don't know how many weapons you've ran into. I ran into some kind of a plasma pist or rifle thing or something purple. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I, that, that's the real gun. But no, I did not find it. Um, I guess before we get into these kind of details, we should we should give the people a basic framework of what the game is and how it works so that they kind of understand what we're talking about in the context of the game. This is a um, this is a roguelike exploration game uh, with some shooting elements. It's very heavy on atmosphere and uh, tension, much like Dread Halls. It's a, it plays a lot like Dread Halls, actually. It's like Dread Halls with a gun, kind of. Um, but uh, it, I, if I had to describe it and like compare it to something, I would say that this is like um, uh, uh, the persistence. It's got some persistence in it. It's got some Doom 3 in it and uh, a little bit of Alien Isolation. Uh, you put all three of those in a blender and you slow it way down. In my case, maybe not Roots. Apparently he had a lot more action than I did. Slow it way, way down. And th that's about the best way I can describe this. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you're exploring corridors, basically looking for things uh, to, to start the ship back up and go back to Earth. Um, Things like uh, the navigation room, fuel for the drive bay, uh, and obviously the bridge to, to, to drive home. Um, you, along the way, you find all sorts of power-ups. Mainly ammunition was all I found in, in oxygen. Uh, your oxygen is constantly depleting, kind of like Freediver. Uh, you have to find these oxygen bottles uh, to to replenish your oxygen meter, but unlike Freediver, the bottles aren't tethered to the wall. You can put them in your inventory, um, but you know your inventory's only got ten spots in it, and you can put anything in it pretty much. Uh, so that's basically what you're doing. You're just exploring corridors. You die. You come back into the game. You have to start all over again every time. There's no progress saved, and the, the map changes much like the persistence. Yeah, but you do unlock um, blueprints and stuff. I don't know if you found a blueprint. Um, there's some kind of a machine that you can craft stuff with and when you're finding. There's a lot of materials out there, Wes. You know, that's one of the things that I thought right off the bat. I thought, wow, 10 slots, that's a lot. I like the the way that they do it, too. Like, when you just go to where this thing is, it's like just the area. You just drop it in there, and then it puts it in a slot, but you don't have to put it into like specific areas, i didn't right? find this fabrication machine man i found one schematic that that uh told me uh, told me how to fabricate the uh the air bottles right hmm. but uh, and i noticed that everything you could pick up had values on it that you could break down yeah. uh to uh to break down into components for crafting but i never found the cra the fabrication machine hmm. or, or or how to craft i never found <laughs> any of that uh, which I found odd, which it kind of led me to believe that maybe I hadn't made it as far into the game as I thought, but I, I'm assuming that I, that I made it pretty far based on the fact that you have a list of objectives, the last of which is go back into Earth orbit, and uh, I completed over half of them. I found the navigation room. I set the coordinates. I found the fuel for the drive bay, and I found the, 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 the bridge. You know, I, I did most of the stuff you have to do to go uh, back to Earth, but I never found any way to, to fabricate anything. I barely saw any enemies. It was a very slow gameplay. Mm. And um, and uh, there were still two big corridors that were locked by green and red card keys, which I never found. So those two doors and the fact that I hadn't found how to fabricate anything uh, is what gave me hope that maybe there's more left to the game than what I originally thought. Yeah, you must. Have, I must have found. I mean, I found it the first, right off the bat, like the first run. I found the fabricator within five minutes. 
Was it close to the the beginning of the game? I might have just missed it. I don't know. It was just a big square thing that was in the middle of the thing, but I didn't have any schematics or any anything to do with it when I found it. So how do you um, interact with it? I I don't know. I see that's the thing is like I because I didn't have anything with it. I um I didn't mess. How did you know what it was? I just I when I scrolled over it, it said something fabricator or something. Really? Yeah, man. I feel like I knew that you got the good version roots and I got ripped off. <laughs> well, I don't know. And it's all obviously procedurally generated. Um, I just, I couldn't like the, the, the other runs that it did. Cause I think I did three or four runs um, weren't as chaotic as that. There was one where I was running or just like you, I was felt like it was forever. Um, that's the best way is like, you're just, because you're so comfortable because nothing's been going on for so long all of a sudden when it does go on it freaks you out um but uh yeah it's crazy so you said that you saw a bunch of enemies but you never saw like the wall crawlers that that are kind of like spiders but they have this eyeball in the middle of them i didn't see anything crawl everything that i saw was walking so oh dude these things crawl all over the walls and ceiling and they scurry around like like uh like a face hugger in alien okay they kept, kind of attack you like that too i kept hearing noises sounding like stuff was scurrying around but nothing was ever there you know yeah uh i found that Ooh, i found the thing is. that we already talked about yeah there it is, there it is. We, i found the uh the thing we talked about earlier the the big thing that killed me right off the bat and then there was this other big hulking monster of an enemy that uh, has the ability to to teleport blink teleport uh so you shoot him a couple of times and he generally ends up in another part of the room and uh, that's how i died the last time as he came up behind me i didn't even know he's back there and uh, he killed me sounds like we had completely different enemies with the exception of that one because i didn't see that guy either i had some other guys some other weird um there was one guy you could clearly tell that he was blind or something it looked like he had no head or something something was weird so but, uh, wife just uh, came through with the text message and told me my mic was a little loud my gain was turned up so sorry guys i did not notice that but it's all fixed now okay yeah i, I didn't notice it either uh so weapons uh you know i only had the uh the one you find in the first room which is kind of a cross a crossbow bolt type th- uh, thing i did find alternate ammo for it that you can find oh. explosive rounds for it which was pretty cool uh, I found some grenades, two different types of grenades that I could use. Um, oh, there was a fourth enemy. I, I forgot. It's not a, a biological enemy, but I did find kind of like this camera turret thing mm-hmm. that if you step into the light, it'll shoot you. Uh, so I did find that, and I did discover how to kill it, too. Um, but beyond that, I found ammunition. I found pistol ammo. I found railgun ammo. But I never actually found the weapons, and I never found the schematics to make the weapons. Mm, yeah, I never found the pistol, but I did find the real gun. And it was cool, but it was... Um, I, I prefer the uh, the nail gun or whatever the hell that thing is. Hey, there's some grenades right there. I never found any grenades either, Wes. It's a lot of stuff going on in this game, and apparently with as much time between the, the two of us that we played, we had completely different gameplays. Um, yeah, apparently. Cool. I mean, it, it seems like yeah that i mean part of the the thing about a roguelike is, is the uh the difference between gameplays and it seems like that there's complete difference uh even between the different platforms because your experience was way different than mine uh let's talk production values a little bit obviously or at least in in, in my case uh i was expecting the the sound effects to to take center stage here and be one of the highlights of the game and it did not disappoint uh in this regard uh sound effects absolutely creepy keeping the, you on the edge of your chair if you're sitting down um and uh basically driving the tension throughout my experience uh did you have the the, the same thing with the uh, quest version yeah yeah the sound was really good it was very um very creepy very uh it got me to the point there's so much noise going on creaks you know stuff sounds like stuff scurrying along um groans like monsters roaring or whatever that um after a while i stopped looking because i'm like dude you know i'm not stupid there's nothing there and then there is something there and it's in my face 
Um, they do a good job of, of making you feel comfortable until you shouldn't feel comfortable. What's the deal with the batteries? What do you think? Uh, as I've moved, I've picked some up like with three on it and I moved them around. I didn't come across any doors or any rooms that seemed to need to have the power on. I thought maybe I'm going to come into a room that had no power and I'm going to need this battery and nothing, dude. And like, yeah, I, I found uh, the batteries to be somewhat useful <laughs> because uh, there were computer terminals. The, uh, the the terminals that you put the, the data disks into, hmm. uh, I only found one of those that were powered up, but I found three or four more of them that were powered down. And all you had to do is switch the battery into that room socket and turn the power on. Hmm. And now that, that becomes accessible. I also found it useful in uh, rooms with multiple of the wall walker enemies uh because they, they are kind of quick and you're not uh so it, it helps to have the lights on rather than trying to find them with your okay. flashlight so uh, i use the batteries and for that as well but you know as i went on uh that that 10 inventory spots ran out really quickly and uh I, I just didn't find it worth it to carry the batteries with me anymore yeah well especially imagine once you get schematics and you know what kind of items you need to build your favorite item you're going to start picking that stuff up too trying to because i i got to find the fabricator and i'm going to be running into those items as i'm going right so it becomes a big juggling mess um because it's so not it's, i think i'm sorry i was I'm gonna sorry. say especially you when done. you have multiple weapons because now you got two different types of ammo and uh it's just you only have limited space uh what i was going to say is i think that there's a lot left to this game that we haven't seen and again admittedly at the top we, we just basically crammed uh right before the show here so we could talk a little bit about it uh but luke martin has rejoined the chat and uh the Shughead review apparently he played it for like nine hours so uh apparently there's a lot more to it than what we've seen wow. And uh, I find that rather encouraging because I do feel like even though I enjoyed my experience, it was a little slow for my liking, uh, but I, I do see the potential in it being very, very good if, if it uh, continues to ramp up kind of like the way Dreadhalls did. Um, now, he says that, uh, that uh, the, both platforms are the same. Uh, but the quest has slightly worse draw distance. And that's somewhat what the uh, the developer told me as well. Uh, but I'll give you exactly what he said to me. Um, well, I mean, I, I can I can paraphrase. Uh, he basically told me that uh, the quest two version had slightly higher render resolution than the quest one version. And the PC version uh, was, uh, it had a, further graphical upgrades but the upgrades were only graphical so it had higher render resolutions it had uh, more detailed shaders it had dynamic lighting and shadows mm. and more particle effects uh, basically those were the differences that the developer described to me when i asked what are the differences okay well it's garbage now i could never play the quest version now i'm just kidding garbage I town couldn't, yeah garbage town i couldn't tell i mean i it was seemed like a really looked really good to me so i like the fact that my, my i wasn't having to worry about being in the dark i like to be in the dark west um i'd rather be looking for because uh, i know in the first game in dread halls you were always running out of light looking for light this here instead of light you're always looking for air um which makes sense because you're in this uh nightmare scenario dude what happened at the beginning dude like i'm just chilling in my my pod you know and all of a sudden it just <laughs> everything went to crap there's electricity and shit and now i'm stuck on this nightmare place it's crazy yeah i'm trying to there are little bits of story that i ran across but there's it's not enough really to piece the narrative together i mean i've made out uh that we're we're on a uh uh a private it's not a, a government ship that we're on it. It's a private corporation doing some kind of experiments. Um, since, uh, I take it that, or at least I think that extraterrestrial life was discovered recently. Mm. And I, I got some sense that maybe the ship was a living thing, or at least had a living component to it. 
uh, in the last thing that I read, but I, I still haven't really quite made sense of it yet. Um, we're, we're still, again, uh, you know, we just get cracking the uh, surface of this one. Um, so you said that uh, you thought the game looked pretty good in yeah. the quest then. Yeah, I couldn't tell that it was a quest game. I know Cyan probably doesn't believe it, but I thought it looked good. Yeah, I thought it looked relatively good. Uh, now, uh, with that said, I could tell it was a quest game. I could tell that the game was developed for quest and uh, moved into PC. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it looked bad at all. Uh, just kind of the, the, the art style of it. You know, quest games have a certain look to them. The, the shapes are kind of boxy, like polygonal. And then the uh the the textures are kind of wallpapered onto everything it's just kind of what quest games look like now with that said the 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 textures were very detailed like i mean it was high resolution very detailed textures but still it was all kind of wallpapered over everything what really made the game and made it so immersive from a visual standpoint for me was the lighting like the lighting and shadow effects the particle effects really give you a sense of presence and um it looked like you were playing a classic PC game. Put me in the mind of some of these uh, boomer shooter mods that we've tried mm. recently. Yeah, like the Doom ones and stuff, right? Right, right. Yeah. But, I mean, it looked more like, I mean, whenever you play those types of games, there are certain, like, scaling issues that you always run across. Not, not the problem at all here. Everything uh, from a scaling standpoint was pretty much spot on. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, at least from my standpoint i did find a um data thing and was able to upload it i think that's where i guess that's how you get your blueprints right that's right yeah i didn't get any bottle blueprint or something i don't even know what the hell i got but i got it west yep. yeah that's i got exciting. a blueprint for for the the air bottle mm. and then i got another disc right after that that just had uh like a uh an opinion log like mm. somebody just writing down their opinion of what they think about what the corporation, the Moss Corporation's doing. I thought oh. they were talking about <laughs> Moss the game for a minute. I was like, they're throwing some major shade at Poly Polyarch here, man. Well, that's crazy that you like it because it does say on there there might be important information on there. So now we've just discovered that there is um, not unimportant information, but uh, I guess I don't know if that even feeds into the story with the stuff you were just talking about. Just, interesting stuff what do you think about the weapon i guess you found the one weapon what did you think about that nail gun i thought it was pretty good it felt it felt good to reload um pulling it back felt like a crossbow even though it was like a yeah. nail, nail thing yeah it worked it worked just like a crossbow and I, I rather enjoyed it it uh it was effective uh it uh it, you know what can i say I, it it uh it was easy to shoot you know it was easy to reload it was easy to to ready it to fire uh it killed the smaller enemies in two shots killed the bigger one in five uh it felt good and it, again it had alternate ammo which was really cool explosive arrows or nails or whatever you want to call them explosive bolts that were really cool yeah i just remember what my the schematic was a uh laser sight added to any projectile weapon dude there must be so much more to this game than we've even seen so i kind of i kind of I'm kind of reluctant to make any kind of a call on it. I can say that I enjoy my time in it, but I really don't think that uh, that I really have had enough time in it to really say how good this game is. I can say it's good. I, I can tell you it, it works. Now, I guess there is a caveat to it works because it didn't always work. Um, I initially tried to play this game with my Oculus Quest 2 via link cable. Mm. The Steam version, mind you, this is not... The oculus native version this is the steam version i tried to play it on my quest through a link cable uh and it let me boot into the game fine i got into the menu screen i could fix my options all that but whenever i would hit start the game it would crash i tried it three times mm. and uh it crashed every time so what i did from there is i just pulled the cable out clicked on virtual desktop and uh not only did it run flawlessly on virtual desktop uh, it looked better visually, like the, the darks were darker, the colors were brighter, uh, it, you know, uh, the everything had a bit more clarity to it through virtual desktop than it did through Link anyway. So I was kind of glad that it didn't work on Link. 
Yeah, that's kind of weird. I wonder if it would have, I guess I would have been in SOL. Well, I guess I would have had to do what you did to play it, right? Yeah. Well, again, I was glad, I was kind of glad that it worked out that way. And it could have been a, you know, a problem on my end, but I did try it three times, rebooting Steam VR every time. And uh, yeah, it would just, uh, it would just get all weird whenever I would hit new game. It would do that thing. I know you've had problems in the headset. You know how it kind of vibrates the, the picture and then, you know, peters out the way it does yeah uh, yeah so it did that a few times but uh it, again it was uh it played perfectly in virtual desktop and i really enjoyed the fact that the black levels look more like an oled through vir virtual desktop than it did going through link did you see those guys there with all the eyeballs all over their head he just had three guys uh, right in his face yeah i missed it i didn't even i wasn't even looking at it yeah yeah so there's a lot of stuff going on in here um and uh yeah i'm excited to get back in there and check it out i'm wondering uh since i didn't find some of this stuff and you found so much of it i'm wondering if there's script in the code of the game that you can't find certain things until you die so many times because i'm thinking because you said you died a quite a few times didn't yeah, you? yeah like three or four times i think yeah, I, see i, 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 I died a couple runs i had only died once in my playthrough so uh and i did notice that there was a lot more ammo the the second time that i walked into the first room there was about twice as many ammos and air bottles as there was the first time mm -hmm. so either there's like a a very inconsistent randomizer at play here or the the game gives you different stuff based on how many times that you've played it yeah it could just be randoms random just got a i had a good one good run i mean because like i i didn't always find a lot of stuff when i was roaming around so yeah i mean there was stuff everywhere for me like i couldn't i if i would have had 20 inventory spots it wouldn't have been enough to carry all of it yeah it's great that's how i felt it was like you know you feel like you got all this space it's spread out stretch out and stuff the <laughs> next thing you know man you're you're full bro and you're now you're swapping a row like I said, you get two different weapons, one on each hip. I had the rail gun on one, I had the nail gun on the other. A couple of things of ammo for each one. Now you're running out of space. You got a couple of things that for uh, air, you gotta have air. Yeah, I don't know if you want me to not breathe. Um, <laughs> it's crazy, bro. You know who else likes to uh, get railed and nailed roots? <laughs> My mom! oh god i did not know that well actually i guess i kind of did know that but i didn't know it in that context all right uh so um one thing i am not quite sure about is uh what the launch price is going to be for this thing i'm i'm quite curious uh to to see what it's going to cost uh and i really i, I can't again i really don't feel confident even putting a price on it. i could tell you that it's at least at least 20 to 25 dollars based on my experience but uh i really need more time in it to, to put a, a price on it in my opinion 20 bucks <laughs> i need no time 20 dollars that was what i would charge 20 bucks dreadalls was it was cheap it was like 10 bucks or something and granted it was it was just a it wasn't this this game is a lot has a, so much more to it um but it's also i don't know how i mean i, I don't I don't feel like we know how much it has to it though. Is That's the thing. Well, I don't feel like either of us had nine, a nine hours, right? Somebody played nine hours. Yeah. That? Nine hours. Yeah. I mean, I, hey, okay. Think of it this way. Like I, you spent what, 90 minutes and how far are Something you like that, yeah. along to the, the system? I mean, you're going to have to go through an entire new thing, run around, finding all the stuff. You haven't even found the fabricator. I mean, I could see this being easily a 10 hour game. Uh, but I mean, depending on how, Lock let me ask you this on. uh there's a lot of cabinets and lockers in this game to look through i barely found anything in any of them did you ever find anything cool in one of those lockers no and i was looking for something really specific i think i did find i mean I, air ammo i'm trying to remember where i found that rail gun it might have been in a locker i don't know yeah i checked them all i you know i only found a couple of things and it was generally like you said either air or ammo yeah which They're was everywhere things. right like i never had any problem 
uh, having enough air ammo always had as much as I needed. I got close, dude. I got pretty low on air for a bit there. And I don't know if it was just the way I was going. It was my one that I had all things going on. Dude, I'm telling you, Wes, man, I was I was running. I was shutting doors behind me because I had a lot of crap coming after me, bro. I don't, don't know where they all came from, but it just they just kept coming. It was crazy. Uh, Diz the Game Cat said he thought that uh, Shughead said that the game cost fifteen dollars in his review. Okay, All right. is that? I think who... that 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 that's a, you know, based on what I've experienced here, uh, I could say that that that's a good a great price for it. I would I would. Even not knowing what what lies ahead with it, I can recommend it all day for fifteen dollars. Yeah, because just what I've played so far has been worth fifteen bucks. I mean, the gunplay is good. There's different weapons. Everything that you found is almost di exactly different from what we that what I did. I'd be interested if there was a third person, what they would have, they would they have had a completely different run as well. So. That well, uh, you know, it's crazy because you you had all different enemies and all different items that you found. Uh, than I did and, and it's we had two completely different experiences which is kind of what you want out of a roguelike right yeah yeah if it was exactly the same then um it'd be kind of wuss I don't know man it just I never got I, I got, probably got about as far as you did I got to the bridge um and then I was looking for the the warp drive you found the warp drive I didn't find the warp drive so yeah yeah I found that uh well, I'm not going to say it. Well, it doesn't really matter. I can't really spoil it because it's not going to be in the same place that it was. So it's already gone. Bro. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Drilla says, man, I missed missed the show. Or uh, you're saying I you missed it by as far as like not coming, being around because you were busy or whatever. <laughs> because that, for right. a second there, I was like, dude, you <laughs> we just started, bro. It's not over. Um, but uh, I guess. No, he said he said he missed being around. Yeah, we missed the, you uh, too. We missed you. Getting bro. the straight dope on the latest VR games, bro. Yeah, we missed you, bro. Uh, so yeah, uh, he, so here's the plan going forward. Now, I think that we will probably end up revisiting this because I'm certainly going to play more of it. Uh, but the original plan was we were going to come on here and do our late night show, and then as soon as I got done with it, I was going to go back in and record my first gameplay. And uh, that was going to be a video for tomorrow. Uh, instead, I ended up, again, the embargo dropped early. So we jumped in and kind of crammed so we could discuss a little bit here on the show. And uh, I'm, I'm still going to go ahead with uh, what I was planning on doing. So after the show tonight, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to record mm -hmm. my next run, my very next run. After this show's over, I'm going to record it and... Uh, that should be ready for you guys to watch sometime tomorrow. So uh, if you haven't already, click that red button and click the bell. Uh, and we'll we'll figure this game out together, friends. I think you're getting the better deal, or they are, because they're now you're already, like, you like, warmed up. You know what I mean? You cracked your neck. You're ready to go in there and just tear some shit up. And uh, you know everything that's going on, right? You know about the weapons. I told you I gave you the secrets about the railgun, which really no secrets, but it's pretty cool. So. yeah i would uh you're gonna have to teach me how to stream roots i don't know how to stream on pc i mean i know how to get the the game out there i don't know how to get the chat in the headset so oh. you're gonna have to uh give me some education on that absolutely dude yeah we're gonna get you in there streaming bro everybody wants to get i want to watch you stream dude dark so. angel needs to watch me play flow weaver so I yeah. gotta get I gotta get going. Well, and there's people that want they want to help you, Wes. They want to give you advice and tell you some tips and tricks. No. <laughs> Shut the hell up, Sion. I don't want your help, bro. Oh, see, two different streams, bro. You know what I mean? Roots is like, throw it at me. Wes is like, shut your mouth. I'm here. Bro. I'm here to help you, Sion. You don't help me. I help you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, I lost my flow weaver footage twice. Ooh. uh so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna start it over and uh, i'm just gonna play it on pc this time and I, i'll start it over and i'll play from the beginning and i as i always do i'll run through my logic of how i figured out this that and the other thing so it won't seem like you know i know all the answers but uh that's the only trying to get the door. <laughs> that's the only thing that sucks about recording on that's why on the footage that I, i've recorded or streamed i didn't even bother trying to uh make it stretched and all that stuff because i 
I just don't have the patience to do it two, three times like you do. Well, here's the thing, dude. I lost it twice, right? I lost the first one. I did it again. I lost that one. That one was tragic, man. That was so bad how that one happened. Like at the end of my uh, gameplay, I know I know what the quest does. You know, it's good at recording if you leave it on default settings, but I sideload into it and I, I make it widescreen. I make it uh, record at 60 frames per second. Uh, I jack up the resolution. I jack all this stuff up to make a really nice video knowing that it causes it to crash sometimes when you do it that way. So I got through the whole video that I wanted to do, right? And uh, before I hit stop on the record, which you should always do that first, because if you can manage to hit stop on the record button, then you're good. You won't lose your footage. But instead of doing that, I went back out to the game's main menu oh. and uh, the, it was still recording. And I, I saw that button still there and I said, Phew. I need to hit stop on that before I lose it. And as I'm thinking this to myself, the red button disappears uh, and it's gone. <laughs> oh, and I spent, I spent like probably three hours trying to restore it, which I did. Uh, and it just wasn't for technical reasons. It, it when I restored the video and, and, and salvaged it, it put it out of sync with the, uh, with the audio file, the mic file. So, Got to do it over again. Um, but what I was going to say, the whole point of all this was playing the same bit the second time, I discovered things that I didn't discover the first time. And in the same hour and the same stretch of game, I unlocked more of it than I did the first time. So it was it was fun. Uh, I actually now, you know, last time we talked, I had one realm that I hadn't been to, the uh, underworld realm. I actually have two now playing the same hour. Now I've unlocked two more realms. There's mm -hmm. another one called sky bridge that I haven't been to yet. And uh, now I know how to get there. So who knows what I'll unlock next time playing this same piece of the game. That's crazy. There's nothing more frustrating than doing content. Some people just say, just play it again. And it's not about that. It's about, it's about the, the, the dialogue. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. When you want something like that, it's just like ripped out of your heart. It's like, you just feel like, oh. I had to take a break from it. Like, I had no trouble going back in the second time and doing it. But after I lost it the second time, I couldn't go back into it. I had to play some other stuff first. I'm ready now. Uh, but I had to I had to get into some other games for a little bit mm. before I was ready to go back into Flow Weaver yeah, yeah. and do well, the, same, the same stuff again, you know. I don't blame you. Well, now, so you said that this game was good but it wasn't your favorite of the three that you played probably right well or what was that said you know again qualifiers here i barely played this game but crashland on the other hand i played quite a bit of crashland over the last two or three days roots and i am so hooked on this game it's mm -hmm. so good it is good right like uh, i don't know so how how um uh, how far did you get in there? Because I know like right now I'm on a level eight. I um I didn't play as much today. I went in there and I played a couple rounds and remembered how crazy things were. And I had Radio Runt's favorite spider that goes ee! and it jumps and it's got this red red thing on its belly. Man, that thing is these things, dude. They come flying at you. It is, makes you want to run and get like i don't know i haven't played a game like this in a long time and it's definitely good well uh i'm on level four or five in it um obviously i haven't played it nearly as much as you have uh but i i can say definitive well maybe not maybe maybe you're playing it the way i am but i'm not playing it so much for progress or let me rephrase that i'm not only playing it to progress i'm also playing the leaderboards so like i'm not going on until roots is under me and gamer tag is under me and pd's under me you know i'm at the top if you're on my friends list and you have crash land guess where you're at mm -hmm. underneath the weasel <laughs> so uh yeah that it, it's taken me a little bit longer to progress based on the fact that i want to score more uh points and go up to leaderboards um but uh yeah i've, I've made it 
to uh at level four or level five i don't remember which one it was yeah no my my goal is to get to the next level and then keep playing until i can get to the next level uh the beauty of this thing is like is it's the weapons man like as you're upgrading right once you get to that propeller, I don't know if you, I'm sure you've gotten that propeller in by now, but yeah, man, the chopper. That, I love it. The chopper, dude. I, or like I like to call it chopper sick falls. It, man, it chop, do that thing. I mean, if you get it, if you're good at aiming, it'll chop through anything just about. And uh, I'm now at a point now, Wes, where there's this electric eel and it's flying up in the sky and it's, it does something to my teleport. I don't know exactly what's happening, but. Like they'll get to a point where I should be able to teleport and I can't, and then uh, bad things start happening. Um, and I've only I've killed it a couple times, but I don't know how to kill it exactly an easier way. So I just try to stay away from that sucker. But it's crazy. Yeah, I haven't seen that thing yet. Um, I think the newest enemy I got were the sandworms. They look like the sandworms on Beetlejuice or, or uh, Tremors. Yeah. Uh, I think that was the newest enemy that uh, they that just unlocked. The cool thing about this game, all right. So this this is, it's a wave shooter, right? But it's not your typical wave shooter. The area that you're in, you're not stationary. You're in a gigantic landscape that you not only can move around, you better move around. If you don't move around, your ass is toast. So you're constantly moving. It doesn't feel like a typical wave shooter. Um, there's 30 levels every level that you go through introduces a new enemy and these enemies are so well done not only do they look beautiful they look like they look like pcbr you know uh characters but uh, the animation is just so perfect on it i mean it's very very immersive uh but not only do they constantly introduce new enemies but they introduce new perks and what perks are are special abilities or uh, modifiers and um, over time as uh, as you level up you can uh, you can pick multiple modifiers and the way that they work together uh, you know it, there's strategy involved with the way you put them together to get a desired effect in the level um, so I mean, it's that strategy element of it that really hooked me on it. That really, I really enjoyed uh, because you can go into a new level and a certain new enemy may be posing some sort of problem for you. All you got to do is go to your perks board, think about what this one with this one might do and uh, play around with that a little bit. And before you know it, you're owning that level and you're on to the next one. Yeah. And then there's also different things you can do too. Like, um, cause I, I can't I think it was traveling man or somebody in my stream told me like those things that have the three heads with the shocking things, you know, I'm sitting yeah. there trying to shoot them, trying to blow them up, but I didn't know, I didn't think to try to shoot the heads. And so, yeah, you, you shoot I immediately. Heads. Yeah. I, was, yeah, I you, told wife that cause, uh, I wanted to, I wanted her to see it and I hadn't made a video of it yet. Uh, so I showed her your video and I was like, Roots, Roots didn't shoot the thing in the head. He's going to have a lot of trouble, you know? Yeah, no. And that was exactly it is, is, um, once I figured that out, I was like, shit, these guys are easy, bro. But it's, it's about figuring, I'm figuring these things out. Right. Like these, the, the big time giant spider ticks, right? I call them spider ticks. I don't know what their long daddy. Yeah, things those are. things are evil. If you don't know how to deal with them. Well, yeah, you got to get up close, bro. Like, you know, if you try to stay away, start to stay back, they get their their blood sucker in you you're you're screwed you can't really hit the thing you got to get up close and just it's pretty cool yeah i don't, I don't want to give away too many tactics i, I don't want to you know it, it's kind of spoilery in a way i mean a lot of the joy of the game is figuring this stuff out um but every enemy has its weak point and, and has its strong points and what will destroy one enemy like you know dispatch them quickly uh, certain other enemies it won't even hurt them at all uh, and there's there's different strategies to how you play. For example, you can charge your pistol and fire charged shots, which do twice the damage. Now, the way that you charge it is uh, when you kill these enemies, they randomly spit these energy balls out that you have to collect that charges your pistol. Now, if you're playing for progress, you probably want to get as many of those as you can and keep your pistol charged as long as you can. But 
uh, if you're playing for points, you can shoot those and blow them up for 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 points, which makes a big difference uh, on the leaderboards. So uh, again, there, there's many different ways you can approach these levels. And, um, you know, again, the, the key to all of it is how you stack your perks. Yeah, that's true. And the points are also XP, right? So like you're not only leveling up your leaderboard, but you're leveling your um, your character quicker. So yeah, the, the quicker you get your levels, that was the thing, man. You get to level 12, I think it is, you get uh, three perks, you know, start to get to multiple perks. It does make a big difference. The turret alone is is overpowered. Just don't make the mistake I made the last time. I um I I should have made it past this level last, and I got cocky, and so I was just kind of just chilling by the turret, and then it ran out, and then all of a sudden one of those spider ticks was there in my face, <laughs> and then it was over. I literally died with like as I was being lifted in the air. Yeah, I died like that once too. Isn't this so frustrating? This game, it's one of those one more time games. Like this is the ultimate one more time game. Like this game is so frustrating to play, but yet so gratifying when you finally get over the hump because you never die to anything that's standing in front of you. They always get you in the back. And what it is is something in front of you will be distracting you and you'll be handing its ass to it. And now all of a sudden, you know, the, the pussiest enemy in the game is jumping on your back and you're dead. It doesn't take long before you're dead. Or that, uh, that spider shoots its web at you and sticks you yeah and then comes yeah. screeching at you running at you uh, see there's now that uh, i know that there's lots of playstation vr people out there uh that have since gone on to own oculus quest uh due to not only the popularity of the quest but the the slow decline of the uh, psvr platform uh so i know a lot of you guys have quests out there so i, I want to say this specifically to you uh this is the only game that i've ever played that has reminded me of farpoint and it reminds me of farpoint more than just a little bit not in the structure of the game it's structured completely differently um but it's kind of like it's kind of like a wave shooter set in farpoint the the environments look very farpoint-esque the enemies look very farpoint-esque and when you dispatch them i mean they blow up like the farpoint enemies i mean it's uh, it's like Farpoint Wave Shooter with way more enemy diversity than what Farpoint had in it. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely definitely has a, a Farpoint feel for sure for me as well. That was one of the things that's why I thought I, you needed to play it. It's, you, it's just one of those. It's like something new, but it's similar to Farpoint in that that sense. Um, I don't know. For me, I'm just having a, a blast playing it. Uh, as I was going to say um somebody uh it was a traveling man said any word on co-op coming and i was doing some research on this game and then what I, i'm not saying it'll never come but what I, what the i was reading the devs uh was basically saying that you know it's a your crash landed on this planet you know it's a survival game in a sense um you know more than a wave shooter you you're dropped on this planet and is uh, where you're at the level i'm at now it's like eight or it might even be nine minutes now the time keeps getting a extended man and if you think nine minutes is is not long because it's not um it, it but when you're on it's forever dude like i i can't stress to you you're dropped on this planet and you just have to survive dude just for nine nine easy minutes get off this planet and then they're gonna fucking maroon you on another one that's the <laughs> thing dude <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, uh yeah, this this game uh again, I love Farpoint so much. So, you know, I kind of feel like I'm playing Farpoint when I'm playing this. Uh and that's part of the reason why I love it so much. Um but it's uh, let's talk about the challenge here, dude. This is not an easy game. You know, so many games these days are nerfed and everybody has to get their participation trophy. Not here, bro not here you're going to earn your progression through this and this is another thing that i really appreciate about this game yeah yeah no i'm glad that it's as hard as it is because that's one of the things i like about it you know if it was easy there's certain games dude that you can just sit there and you can play forever but um and this is procedurally generated as well um not only the the, the where everything is but the what comes at you 
um, which is kind of what one person, and it's kind of true, I guess, in a sense. They said they they think the leaderboard um, isn't really as accurate as it, it can be because there's such a variety of different things coming out that there's no way to really tell who's getting more enemies or or, or more of those red balls or who knows what. You know? The only way to the only way to um to to account for that and to close that gap of the uh random the randomness of it is by repetition right so yeah maybe the guy who bested you on the leaderboard got a better run than you did with uh with regards to what enemies spawned and how many energy balls but uh the thing is is you could go back in it a time or two and then maybe you'll get a better run than him right so it's kind of it's not that it's not fair it, it just certainly is not uh equal because of the procedural aspect of it and um while we're, we're talking about that aspect of it one of the things that really sold me on this game uh, other than your excellent video and by the way roots did an excellent video uh, i know i already mentioned it but i mean it really was a good video so i, I highly recommend you go back and checking it out but um I mean that that got my interest but what sold me on it was the developer i started looking into this guy and sir i thank you for for granting me a review key i'm not going to uh disrespect you by trying to pronounce your name and butchering <laughs> it like i know i would uh just uh thank you doctor for uh for granting me access i really love your game um but this guy is really impressive he's a lecturer at a university and uh in britain i'm uh, i'm lost at the moment as to which one it was i forget which one it was but he's an expert in artificial intelligence and uh procedural animation and i think that uh you know me being a layman i think that you know the fact that those are his fields of expertise are why this game is so immersive mm -hmm. and why these enemies seem so real yeah absolutely and i think this came out on gear right originally or one of the early early platforms i could have sworn i read that and maybe i'm wrong but um i don't know just everything about this game man i don't know how far you've gone into getting those extra things like you've got that like there's a stake that you can shoot out right and it it's like you're shooting a, a stake through the heart of these spiders bro and it's so satisfying i think that's another thing i like about it is everything's exploding there's things flying everywhere you know body parts and um it just feels like carport so yeah yeah just like farpoint yeah um yeah i mean I, I can't recommend this game enough it's 20 dollars on the, the oculus quest store i hope uh i hope that this one day comes to pc i'd love to see what uh this thing would look like you know upgraded with some horsepower behind it because it's absolutely beautiful on the quest 2 it's one of the best looking games i've seen on quest 2 um uh, other than like the first like the tutorial level was weird man the one where you just read pretty much like that level i could see like fixed foveated rendering in it like i could see the lines but after that after i got into the actual game i never saw it again yeah i don't even remember the the, the do you have to do the tutorial i might have skipped it no i don't think you have to do it yeah i skip stuff all the time yeah. and then i wonder like why can't i do that oh maybe i should do the tutorial it's like 50 50 so. right right um but no man this, this game is, is absolutely impressive it's great i highly recommend it and roots you know uh it's this game and another one that i've been stuck on and you know the other one i can't talk about but it's the same type of repetitive nature to it short gameplays and uh in addictive gameplay uh that game is the one i really would like to see co-op in but that's another story for another day um we were talking about the difficulty of it uh, of this game and um you know i've heard rumors and i don't know how true it is that the developer is actually thinking about making the game easier because he's worried that people won't see the later levels and the later enemies mm -hmm. that people are going to nope out before uh, they get to that and if you're watching sir please if you do something like this please make it optional i love the game i love the challenge of it right now if you want to make an easy mode that people can uh you know just 
blast their way through it. I mean, I'm sure it would still be fairly uh, challenging because it's a, it's hard, you know, the, it's hard as it is. So I'm sure making it a little easier, it would still be challenging. Uh, but I like the challenge to it. That That's the rewarding part. Um, so, yeah, make it optional. Let those guys go through the game. Don't give them the ending. Only the people who do it on normal get the ending, okay? Because uh, we put in the time. Um, but uh, please, please don't nerf this game. It's it's a it's a it, it's a trend that's all too common in today's uh, gaming world and world at large. We don't need our game nerfed. Uh, and if you do, please make it optional. Well, and this is the thing too, and that's what I kind of think I read that he was said that he was going to leave normal plus alone, which to me means normal and an expert or whatever the, the higher level is. Um, this is why I would say it would be a big mistake uh, because I bought this game and somebody, I think it was Drew said something about that and right off the bat when we first brought it up, he said the same thing that there was, really good reviews about this game i bought this game because i so many people that we in the discord were saying it was good and everybody was raving like every single review was raving about it right well my thought process is they were raving about this version not fucking nerfed you know what i mean don't <laughs> don't ruin it that's my thought is like you have something you have a gem here you have something that's really good and um there's a there's a it's just a pretend, uh, people just tend to want to ruin it for some reason, just to, I guess, ner nerf it for the, the average person that's complaining. And, um, like you said, just give us the option to, um, continue the way we are and let them blow through it and, uh, waste their time, I guess. Yeah. I know it seems like Roots and I are really passionate about this, and it's not completely because we love this game so much. And we do, we do love this game. Uh, but this is kind of something that's uh, been on our minds for quite some time because recently another game that we absolutely loved at launch uh, changed the game substantially to make it easier for the people who complain on Steam VR. And uh, as you know, Roots, it doesn't matter what you do. People are going to complain on Steam VR. So, uh, you know, these are first time game developers. And uh, the game is still good. Don't get me wrong. The changes that they made didn't ruin it, but it did certainly make it easier. There are many, uh, many areas of the game that were reworked. Like the map was significantly reworked and stuff cut out that, you know, I enjoyed the challenge of going through. And this is just me playing through it. Um, wife, she played through the whole game. And, you know, spoiler alert, guess what? Bruce Nelson... As the, as the game stands today, Bruce Nelson is a pussy. She had no trouble with the final boss of the game. She said it was so easy. It was such a disappointment. The whole game she loved, but the, the, the ending of it was just, it was just too easy. Uh, was that, was the ending changed from the beginning or do you know? Well, you don't we no don't idea. know. We don't know okay. if it was changed. I know that as the game is now, wife said it was simple. So, I mean, it was easy, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, uh, I mean, that's the that's the danger, right? It's like everybody wants to. Let's so let's imagine a, a amazing puzzle game, Mist. Okay, Mist for Quest comes out. Roots goes <laughs> on the 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 board and he says, "This fucking game is too hard. You need to nerf this." And they start putting on all these clues, and and they're now giving you the feeding you the hints. And mist is now garbage, right? I mean, they, they, the the people that are vocal anymore are the ones that complain, and that's the sad right. part. Is the ones that love the game. I mean, especially like we said right off the bat with Ben, um, the challenge was what was so good about it. Like when I went into, and I'm not saying that there isn't challenging levels, but when I went into some of these levels, and because it was so hard, and I looked around, and there was blades flying everywhere and i thought oh my god like how am i going to get through this and then i got through it and i was like yeah you did it roots um but now i, I don't know if it's because they nerfed it or because i'm good i don't know <laughs> uh they, they nerfed it no just, just playing man <laughs> no the, the game isn't significantly different 
uh, as it is today. There's just certain areas that that kind of got uh, cut out and streamlined uh, as it is today. And that's the problem because it seems as if they're not quite done yet because as of yesterday, the developer has put forth a poll wanting to know what we think about the way the camera works in this game. And it, for those of you who haven't played it, the camera works precisely like it works in Astrobot Rescue Mission, which is the gold standard in VR platformers. It's a fixed camera. You're controlling a third person character from a fixed position. And sometimes that brings you into an odd angle or a distant piece of the map, but that odd angle, that bit of distance is what gives the game challenge. It's what sets it apart from a flat game. Flat games always follow the character and the platforming, the only challenge you come across is timing. It's more than that in VR. It's the angle, it's the distance, it's the three dimensional depth of it. And if you put the camera following the, uh, the character, then you're just knocking out what makes VR great. You're, you're taking the 3D aspect uh, and diminishing it and you're taking the challenge level which you have already started to diminish and diminishing it further so there's this this survey out there i've personally asked the developers to leave it up for at least a week and they have uh they've said that they would leave it up for a while uh it's not in the description right now it will be in the description if you're watching this on replay it's already on our discord that is in the description uh, I'm calling on all of you strangers out there to let your voices be heard. Don't let all the, the assholes on Steam ruin this great game. And it's not a good game. It's a great game. Don't let those assholes ruin this great game because they, they uh, found something that they could complain about. Go on there, fill out this survey, tell them if they're going to change it to make it optional, right? If you're going to nerf it further, make it optional. We love the game as it is. We loved it more as it was. Leave it alone, bro. By the time you get this thing on Quest and PlayStation <laughs> VR, those assholes on Steam are going to be so far in your rearview mirror that you're not going to even worry about what they say. So uh, th that's really all I got to say. I don't want to get off on a big rant about this thing here. I've already spent two or three episodes ranting about this very thing. So uh, I'm just asking all of you, please help save this awesome game. Uh, click on the link in the description or in the Discord and uh, take this survey. It doesn't take all that long unless you just decide you want to write a paragraph to them like I did. <laughs> uh, well, that was my, my main thing when, when you said something about this. And I literally, this was my thought process. And you never... This should never be the thought process or um, of a, a potential game player of your game, right? I thought, shit, I better go play it soon. I better get it, you know, I better finish it because I don't want them to ruin it. <laughs> if they ruin it, dude, then I won't end up playing through. You're going to end up, you. I guess more people will see it, but the, the hardcore people that love the game the way it is will never see the end because I'll just stop playing it. Right. Right. Um, because I, uh, I just don't want it to be easy. You know, no, the, the, what makes this game rewarding? Uh, I mean, beyond the fact that it incorporates VR more than any platform ever, any, any platformer ever has. And that's including Astrobot. This is more of a VR game than Astrobot is. Uh, and, and they're trying to diminish that now. And I, I really hope that they, uh, they think twice about or at least make it optional let me ask um, you this is bruce nelson as much of a pussy in real life as he huh. is in the game no he's probably on his way here to kick my ass right now just because he heard <laughs> me say that oh god oh shit man Shh. we're sorry bruce uh, uh scion in the chat says hey there are a lot of cool people on steam yeah i'm not talking about uh i'm not talking about us bro i'm talking about those guys right you know who i'm talking about the boo birds out there who uh who hate their life and uh sit in front of their computer monitor all day mm, karen um delirium drew says uh now he has to play crash land he might refund you're not going to be refunding it bro guarantee you. you don't refund this game drew it's awesome it's awesome but he said his friend um found out the limit it's five refunds for 30 days damn that's a lot bro that's a lot of games to refund. yeah dude that's more than one a week I mean, hell, man, that's open. That's like, that's a better deal than Vibeport. 
Yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just kidding. There is no better deal than buy port. Yeah. Well, buy port number one. Yeah, that's right. Well, I was I what was I was playing something from Viveport the other day, but I can't remember what it was. But there's a lot of good games on there. I don't know, but that uh, that interactive experience that we talked about on Sunday is calling my name. I think I want to get in there and check that thing out. Uh, which one was that again? Uh, I forget what it's called. Give me a second, and I'll I'll tell you. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we need elevator music. I'm going to my handy dandy show notes from sunday oh, yeah. uh it was called ad 2047 oh yeah ad 2047 i'm gonna have to check yeah. that out i like all the experiences yeah. man there's a lot of good stuff on there yeah there absolutely is and uh i'd say we're going to be doing a, another viport episode here very soon in fact yeah well, but it, uh probably maybe not next week but uh soon <laughs> is that one uh museums uh of natural histories no what is it the odd one or whatever is it still going on uh it was of... two weeks so it probably is it was a two-week thing so uh museum of um other realities yeah, other realities yeah if you guys haven't checked that out yet it is uh free to uh free to play so to speak for a limited time and uh i don't know about the the exhibit the the special thing that they've got going on right now i can't speak to whether that's good or not but the the museum as it stands is cool and you should take the opportunity right now uh if you don't have viport infinity to uh to go into the museum of other realities and check out some of the exhibits they're really really awesome yeah and last time they let you keep the museum we think it was kind of a accident but maybe it wasn't maybe pick it up now and you might get to keep it again yeah last time they had one of these free to play deals with the uh museum of other realities the the viveport store instead of making it a temporary thing I actually let people have the the permanent thing for free it's a 20 dollars app uh while the steam version was timed the viveport version still in my library <laughs> you know what i mean yeah uh I, I don't think it was intentional but uh, maybe it was i think that that museum was pretty cool especially for people like the the uk people that are still stuck inside actually not just well, there you there. have it money show nine coming from the museum of other yeah, realities yeah, that sounds like, <laughs> yeah it sounds like a good idea absolutely uh, we i tell you what we won't have the problem we had in zero caliber we'll certainly be able to carry on a conversation in the museum yeah because there's nothing going on it's just us checking stuff out right dude i'm finding cool stuff out about uh zero caliber all the time people say that it works with uh, gun stocks i didn't see a thing in there to calibrate a, a gun stock but uh, people say that gun, gun stocks work in it and uh I, I saw today that it works with the uh b haptics tax suit Ooh. which uh which would be awesome right i mean think about that last level we were in that battlefield where shit was blowing up everywhere uh imagine that in that friggin' haptic suit how cool that would be yeah it would be cool yeah well that, that i mean that whole zero caliber thing um let's say how uh, far uh, i spaced what i was gonna say <laughs> it's gone. awesome yeah. anyway uh patrons if you're watching uh go check out the money show it's a good episode uh good game good discussion uh and it's been up for about a week now so check it out yeah if you haven't checked it out what's wrong with you anyway uh, i just wanted to mention vin vr again it's not in the description just yet but if you're watching this uh as a replay the the link will be in the description to this survey please all of you get on there and tell these people to come to their damn senses they're first time game developers and they're worried because it's not unanimously positive uh you know they got some negative reviews and uh it was based on this camera deal people didn't like the fact that it was hard to uh, get through some of these sections because of the distance and Deal angle that's what i say scion uh, um actually at reminded me with his question i was gonna ask you dude have you used your gun stock yet bro i haven't had time man with all this other stuff we've been playing stuff we're talking about today stuff we can't talk about today mm. uh i haven't had time to do it but it's certainly at the top of my to-do list uh, i did um it was a little weird when i first got it because i had it set up wrong i didn't know it at the time but i had it set up wrong 
uh, but I have modified it. I did mention that I needed to modify it to make it right. I have done that work. So it's, it's in a usable state now for the last two or three days. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much top of my to-do list. I do need to learn how to calibrate these things though. I've never used one before. Yeah, you'll be a pro by next week. And then Ray Delator says we should really consider getting a B haptic vest. I am considering getting a B haptic vest. That's as enough. a matter of fact, there's that's a enough. reason I brought it up. That's why I just said I was, I was thinking about it myself as well. Really? Yeah. I, I think I'm going to get one. I really do. I was yeah. asking Masher about it today. Uh, I think I'm going to get one. I'm going to get something. I'm going to get. I'm going to get an expensive PCBR peripheral. I don't know what I'm going to get yet. It's it's pretty much down to wheel and pedals, force tube. B haptic suit, mm. vest, vest, B haptics vest. Yeah, well, there's uh, you got some something there. One of those. I three. don't know. I, I'm leaning toward the vest. I've asked people about it. I asked SGT about it. I asked Masher about it. They're all saying, "Dude, it's awesome." So uh, that's probably the way we're gonna go. I wouldn't do the wheel. But that's just me. I'm soured on the wheel. So. Well, my whole thing with the wheel is I'm going to get one of those anyway. I already know I'm going to get one of those. When the when the price is right on one of those, I'm going to get it. Uh, I don't I don't want to drop three hundred dollars on it right now, when I know I'm going to get it for two hundred dollars if I'm just patient. I would not pick one up again unless I had a frame to attach it to, because that was part of the problem too, man. That thing fucking is like it's vibrating like crazy, dude. Like it'll it'll move your desk around dude if it's not a good desk it's it just doesn't you need to have something needs to be it needs to be attached to a frame in my opinion uh in all of my wheel expertise <laughs> but I uh, ray de la Torre says it's a tough choice uh lee vr says wheel and pedals and i'd be curious to know if lee vr has tried the be haptics test. radio run wheel and pedals we're, we're not talking about a wooger here guys we're talking about 40 localized haptics areas front and back on this thing um delirium drew says will and pedals versus vest check out the games see that's that's the thing it's the games i did check out the games there's a long list of games that that vest supports and when you talk about will and pedals you're talking about one genre you're talking about racing games there's like five racing games that i want to play gta5 but but if i if i've well, six. Thank you, Roots. Uh, but if I get this vest, dude, you go into pop one and you jump off that building, you feel the wind hit you. When you go outside that red zone, it shocks you all over while the whole time you're out there. Mm. Uh, pop one, Half-Life Alex, Boneworks. Imagine Boneworks with friggin' body haptics, dude. I want it. Uh, exactly. Uh, Will and Pedals would probably make just as much of a difference or most more so in the games that i would play with it but there's only just a handful of games that i would play with it whereas with that vest i would pretty much wear it for everything that i played yeah That's even true. the games that it doesn't support uh, uh like with official native support it has like this audio mode based on the sound it still gives you a haptic effect even on the stuff it doesn't support that's crazy. You watch movies with it on. Wes's wife is like, Wes, you're taking that off. He's like trying to sleep in it and shit. And she's like, this is, you're not <laughs> I don't going know. overboard, bro. <laughs> she might like it, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like, can you can you put the vest on? You're like, that's your superhero <laughs> vest, bro. <laughs> Coming to bed, uh, could you put the vest on? Yeah. <laughs> you know who else likes the vest? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. No, but I'm serious. I'm leaning haptics. Uh, Delator says that the game list is getting bigger every day for B haptics. It is, and there's already like 50 games or something like that on it, and good games at that. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, Half Life Alex, Zero Caliber, Boneworks. These are all games that stuck out to me. And I mean, shit, Population One. If anything's going to get me into Population One, this thing's going to do it, right? That's crazy. Can you imagine the? the B haptic suit in the half-life Alex Bioshock one uh, mod or whatever. Like, have you tried that one yet? The one that's Bioshock or whatever? No, I was actually thinking about adding it to our list today. 
Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, with all the other stuff that we ended up playing, uh, when, you know, it, it ended up being Cosmo Dread. Mm. Um, but yeah. that was what it was going to be my suggestion was was that because it's that same guy it's the same guy that did the lost case it's the same guy that did that resident evil 7 map wow. it's the same dude that whim by tart guy he he's extremely uh talented level creator well and, what's cool uh, about it is the fact that they went and got the assets for it right it kind of shows you that what what can be done um and it's what i've hoped for you know, you see all these other games from the Source One, and it says, you know, made with Source One. I think I've been playing Left for Dead too. You know, it says right there, you know, made with Source. Um, it, there's going to be a series out there made with Source Two, right? It's going to start right now. Somebody's going to make some kind of a a mod, and and people are going to love it so much that they're going to make a game out of it, and it's just exciting to be a part of, right? I want Valve to make another game in it. Yeah, I want. I have it. Alex has been, by the way, happy birthday, Half Life, Alex. It's been out a year now, Roots. It's forty percent off on Steam right now. Oh wow, what a yeah. what a deal, huh? What a steal. Yeah, well, you never know, man. I I was thinking how amazing Left for Dead Two was with Vorpax and why they couldn't put that a Left for Dead in VR, you know, or any of their series. So we know they were looking at that at one time. Hopefully, yeah. they pick it back up. Yeah. Yeah, for all we know, we never knew Half Life Alex was out there until all of a sudden it was, you know. Uh, Lee VR says GTA Five VR will and pedals mods. Enough said, dude. That's a very compelling argument, but I will just repeat what I said a moment ago. I'm going to get the wheel and pedals. It's just what am I getting now, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't want to drop three hundred dollars on the wheel and pedals. I don't think it's worth it because I know that you can get them for sub two hundred dollars in november on ebay you know what i mean so uh yeah I, i'm leaning i'm leaning haptics fast here which you know honestly i think will and pedals might be in third place because i've always wanted one of those force tubes to have a, a vr gun that recoils like a real gun and kicks you in the arm i mean that might be as good as this freaking haptics vest yeah it might make you not do too well because they're recoil um Oh, okay. Uh, Delirium True. I was wondering who he was talking to. So why'd you change your name? I was thinking he was talking to me. And so he's talking to Void Void Cat, Void Citizen. He's now the uh space denizen. Uh, barely changed it. Dude, that's a big change, dude. He just ripped my Well, heart no, out. not really. Think about it. Think let's let's think this through logically, Roots. Space is the void. That's true. And denizen citizen, I mean, it's not that different, bro well yeah well at least you're telling me right now because i would have been like and he's got the same guy? uh the same avatar too by the way that's how i knew who it was that's true sure anyway uh ray delator says you'll probably love the horror games with the b haptics vest yes yeah yes can, sir can you imagine playing uh did they, they have it set up for resident evil 7 four packs why not no but, but uh again it will work with that it, you know you have directional audio in in vr in video games in general and i'm assuming that that's what it's going to use in its audio haptics mode uh it does list psvr as a wired support so like uh you could plug it in and, and use it with the psvr uh so i mean i could do native resident evil 7 in it if i want to far point whatever uh well um well, that's actually true that's true that'd be pretty cool right uh luke martin um just figured out how to pull roots into um the uh the scoreboard for for um crash land because he said that he was trying to beat my my score on arachnophobia level three he said i did really well on that level you did uh, you did well on that level roots you were 16 when i started uh on that later board in the in the world you were 16 oh wow uh now or when i left you were at 20 oh, okay well, well i was cranking it bro i was cranking it yeah it's fun that game so, is uh, so much fun dude 20 dollars is a steal dude for what you get in that game in my opinion dude i i think it all day long it's uh it's well worth the cost of admission uh dave station joining the chat dave bro you missed it go by crashland it is fucking awesome it's awesome what's up dave 
anyway uh yeah so that's the show uh, up to this point we do have a little bit uh of business left uh but for those of you just joining uh cosmophobia is cool you should check it out especially if it's 15 dollars. crashland's fucking awesome you should go check it out even if it's 30 which it's not it's 20 uh, go uh, sign the vin vr adventure uh by the way you might want to get the playstation community on this dave vin vr adventure has continually being nerfed by the developer and they're making it easier and easier and easier now they have a, a poll out there asking people if they want uh you know the camera system to change from the astrobot style fixed camera to the follow the uh character style camera uh which i'm adamantly opposed to and uh, i'm trying to get as many people as i can to sign this uh this this uh feedback form that they've put out so that we can stop this travesty from taking place um besides that uh, i'm thinking about getting uh a haptics vest and uh that's that's the show up until this point uh but let's knock it uh, let's uh let's kick i'm sorry i'm stumbling over my words let's end the show off by revisiting something that i covered before but roots just experienced for the first time. The Walking Dead Onslaught was a game that I bought on PlayStation VR. And while I wasn't quite, you know, as positive as I could have been about the game, I was certainly more, more positive about it than a lot of people were. Uh, I don't think it's a garbage game, uh, or I didn't think it was a garbage game at the time when I played it. I played quite a lot of it. Uh, played pretty far into it actually almost to the end of it and um, roots just now picked it up on sale for $14 so right off the top roots here before we even get into the details of your experience $14 is not a lot of money for uh, you know a fairly big budget VR game like this do you feel like you're, you're going to get your money's worth I don't know man my thing is, is I'm wondering what I want to know where the money went for like Servio, such a big company, AMC. Um, there were so many things that made me wonder, like, like just the animations of the zombies and the way they moved and stuff was bizarre, right? And they were like kind of jittering down the street. Yeah. I found myself in the middle of the storm um, at one point because I was scavenging and I uh, I got back. I pinned myself in a a corner i couldn't i was like shit there's nowhere out of here i had to run through this building right um and as i'm running through my character saying telling michonne or michonne was the one of somebody i don't know if i was michonne or talking to rick or who i was but was saying i don't want to i hope i don't get stuck in a storm as i'm taking damage from the storm you know what i mean <laughs> And um, so I'm running through the storm and it's red taking damage, but the other zombies are still in there doing their thing. It was very bizarre because I saw exactly what irritated Gamertag about it because it was like, what, it just, I don't know, man. I There are parts of it that I like. I, I felt really good when I built the city hall or town hall. I got to see the fresh building. That was pretty cool. Um, you know, the story was weird. I thought the whole Daryl Dixon story, the first chapter was bizarre the way that it's, ha I don't like Rick's voice. I'll tell you right off the bat, man. They, <laughs> they should have kept him out of the game. Walker's completely. got me. Yes. Yeah, Walker's I never, got me. I never picked Rick because of that, but I did anytime he was talking to the story wise, it was bizarre. It was like everybody's voice was legit. And then here's the main person that you remember um, I think it would be better off for them to just not have him in it if they couldn't get um, Andrew Lincoln to do the voice or they didn't want to spend the money. It's just there's a lot of baffling things because Westworld I felt was so good and it was a move. It was a it was so good that it drew me into the series. Right. And now I was hoping the exact opposite could happen. A series that I really wanted to experience to be in it. Um, in my experience, with the exception of of the voices and the music, I I didn't feel like I was in the the, the series, right? So yeah, um, you know, I don't want to redo my entire uh, you know thoughts on it from before, but it's not very good fan service. Uh, now, with that said, it's a fairly average game. Now, I will say this: I played it on launch 
on PlayStation VR. Uh, the, it has been updated a couple of times since then. And I can say that it is marginally better now than it was when I left it. The, the combat's more balanced. It's not so easy anymore as it was before. Like if you let these, these walkers get on you, you're pretty screwed. Like before you weren't, you could just stab them all in the head. You're, uh, now your knife gets stuck. Like if you stab one in the head, your knife gets stuck. And before, like it would get stuck for a half a second and then the walker would just fly off of the knife without you doing anything. Like, like physically move off of it. Like there was some kind of force compelling it off of there, even though you didn't do anything. Uh, now your knife gets stuck and it, it's a bit problematic in a group because it takes some effort to get it loose. Um, the gunplay is a bit more balanced. You know, uh, if one, one headshot doesn't kill a zombie, two will where before you could, you know, brain them four or five times and they wouldn't fall, which anybody who walks, watches The Walking Dead knows, that's the way you kill the walkers. You shoot them in the head. So uh, that they did much better on that. Um, obviously, there was a, a marginally improved video, visuals on the PC version, but I don't think that was so much the game as the hardware. You know, there was more clarity because I was playing on... Uh, on a, a newer PC headset and a, and a very beefy gaming PC. Um, unplayable on the Reverb G2, by the way. Was it really? Um, well, I mean, the game ran fine. That wasn't the problem. The problem was, is to run, you have to click the left thumbstick in. But that that control didn't work on the, the G2 controllers. So you can only walk, and the walking is slow. And, you know, especially in like the arcade scavenge runs, uh, you have to run. Like if you don't run, you're going to die. Uh, so that pretty much made it unplayable. I had to switch over to my Quest 2 to play the game. But uh, I did enjoy it. I mean, it's not going to be game of the year or anything. Um, <laughs> I think, we, did we give this game of the month for October just because there was nothing else out I last year? May, yeah, I may have for sure. You know what's weird about this is i don't know um i don't know what i'm gonna enjoy more if i'm gonna enjoy building the town or if i'm gonna enjoy the story i thought the story was just there was cool parts about it like as you're going through and you know and daryl's telling the story and he's it's like you get through a part and he's adding part to it as you know like you get through a certain area and he's like and i barely made it through and like certain parts of that aspect I thought was kind of cool story-wise. Um, I just, I, my thing was I wanted to jump into Daryl and bitch slap Rick around a little bit. Cause like it was, wasn't even like you said, for fanfare, dude, like he's Rick is asking Daryl questions. Like he's his dad. Like you were gone for two days. Where were you Daryl? Like, and Daryl been like, fuck you, Rick. Like, well, you're not my, I can, I never remember Rick ever grilling Daryl for you were gone for two days. I need to know where you were. And why won't you tell me the details? It was just very weird. It was very, it just didn't seem like it was a real conversation that would have happened, right? In the story that, that, was. that particular uh, thing, actually, um, in the context of the story uh, where this, game supposedly takes place that actually makes a little bit of sense because at the time i think it's between season eight and season nine uh rick and dara are at odds and they do bicker a lot about little stupid shit like that so but it was the way uh, the conversation went down i just felt like it was like somebody would have been like how oh, i'd be asking my son you know like where were you you've been gone for two days right. i demand where you were at um and then daryl had been like screw you dad i don't you're not my dad rick <laughs> um but uh but yeah i see exactly what you there are parts of it that i enjoyed um and then there were parts of it that were super annoying to me but uh so i don't know i i really did enjoy building the the town hall and i want to see what it looks like when everything's all fixed up and everybody's doing their thing i've already got two new people west you know that's you you know you got a good community when you got a couple new people coming into town and uh they're joining the posse so i can only imagine what that's going to be like right now tell me this wes um how 
was that wrench as big to you as it was to me? Like I had this wrench in my hand and it was like, it was like a Gallagher prop, dude. It was like, <laughs> yeah. what is this thing? It was so huge, dude. I did. Sometimes you got to work on big pipes, you know? <laughs> I just you know who else around. has big pipes roots? <laughs> my mom! Yeah, she loves big pipes. I was running around <laughs> whacking people, or those zombies with that thing, just a whack. You know, but no, I, I don't know. I, I can't decide if I, I mean, it's worth 14 bucks. If anything, we were able to talk about it on the show, you get a chance to try it on PC VR. I'll probably, um, I don't know if I'll play through it all, but I'll play it again and see if I feel like it's the story's drawing me in. It I does. Did, I it, did like the way the story was, was being told, you know, kind of. It, it does get better as it goes. Uh, I can say that. I can say that while most people seem to prefer the the, the scavenger runs in the game, uh, I do. I like the story, uh, the story part better. The, like playing through Daryl's story, I found more enjoyable. It's the same style of gameplay, only uh, it's not so rushed. Like you can explore and scavenge at your own pace instead of having to run through like supermarket sweeps and grab what you can. Uh, there are some parts that get hairy. Obviously there's a lot of enemies that you can uh, run into. Um, and I like to be told a story. So, and I, and I love the characters. So I, I enjoyed the story part better. Although most people like the scavenging or the uh, scavenger runs better. Uh, the one thing I did like about the scavenger runs is when you get back, I enjoyed the progression, like you're talking about uh, progressing the town, uh, leveling the weapons up. I enjoyed that aspect of the game. Uh, really what I didn't like about it was, obviously it was too easy to begin with. Um, I, I thought it was terrible fan service because it sets you down in Alexandria and you can see familiar areas all around you, but you can't go to it. You can't explore any of it. And, um, it sits you down in this little area that's not on the show. Nothing that you recognize about this little area that you can move around in is actually in the show. Uh, and, and that, besides that, where are all the people at? People are building buildings and shit, but you only see Michonne and Carol. That's it. You don't even see Eugene. You just hear Eugene. You never even see him. So, like, uh, I thought it was pretty terrible fan service from that uh, perspective the story has nothing to do with the television series you can't explore alexandria none of the people are there um and i, I felt like visually it could have been better the the scaling was a little off in the game some stuff was smaller some stuff was bigger but what really bothered me about the visuals uh was the color palette like everything is this brown green color like it, the 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 textures and uh, the character models, everything's very detailed. Very good looking walkers, by the way. I probably prefer the way that these look to even the ones in Saints and Sinners. But uh, the, the color palette just looks like, I don't know, it looks like pute to me. It's like, it's got this weird tint over everything, uh, which is a really weird choice in my opinion. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, my thought was, is I just, uh, you know, we keep, putting servios up at this level that i'm not i keep seeing not being delivered in several games over and over again and not that they're not a good company but it's like at some point like uh this is this is this should have been a, a you know a slam dunk and uh and there was a lot of things that happened with it but i mean i feel like um even like i said that the one voice would have made a huge difference i think which is kind of weird that one voice could make such a difference well well you know rick's technically not on the show anymore so i kind of get why they weren't able to get andrew lincoln yeah no i get it it just uh it sucks i don't like it well that said that that guy that did rick's voice did it better than i would have done it so it's not, not like he's horrible it's just he draws that accent out so much at times that it's uh it, it's it's comical actually yeah well I just uh I, I i never got to see the katana either that's one of the things i I guess once i get to the point where i can start slicing some stuff up yeah once you progress man you start to unlock a lot of weapons uh there's a lot of different stuff and when you start getting rifles and shotguns and shit it actually it 
the game does get better as it goes. The early part of the game is really the worst part of the game. Okay. Do I have but, to play uh, Onslaught also, Drew says. Hashtag no refund. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that this is a great game, but I do think that uh, $14 is a fair price for it. So, um, it, it's a, it's average. It's an average uh, zombie arcade game. If you're looking for, like, super awesome Walking Dead fan service, that is not this game. Uh, but it's a decent average uh zombie style arcade game with some story driven uh stuff and uh progression elements to it as well yeah it's got some does some things right some things i enjoy and then other things i don't but uh i think that 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 red wave is the worst part of it you know just the way that it happened to me as i'm dying i'm saying i don't want to get stuck stuck by the mob and i'm still seeing the other guys now one thing i noticed is i'm running you notice everything all speeds up too right yeah kind of i mean um so there's no real i mean you're not really speeding up to get away from the you might speed away i don't know if the the, the wave might speed up too i know the zombies no the, the way the wave is constant and the zombies move a little faster but you still they don't move as much faster as you move faster when you're running okay. like you do get away from them quicker if you're running all right i noticed that i could it looked made me look like i was sprinting but then i saw them moving a little bit faster too so well um uh, it's just kind of like uh, in the heat of it, as they get closer to it, and you're making more noise and and being less stealthy, that they kind of come after you harder. One of the things I did notice uh, this time that I didn't notice before is that the uh, the the audio physics worked really well. Uh, you know, like for example, there was a part that I knew if I got too far into it, that a horde was going to come at me. So I wanted to pick off the ones that were standing around first before I got up there and started all that. So I, I had my knife out. I walked up to a car and just tap, tap, tapped it on, on the car. And sure enough, zombies that had their back turned to me turned around and started walking toward me. So they heard that little tap, 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 which is exactly what they would have done on the show. And it felt really cool. Yeah, man, that's pretty cool. Well, thank God they're not real. That would be sketch. <laughs> yeah uh but anyway yeah um you know it's not for everybody but i certainly think that 14 dollars is a fair price for it it's not uh, uh broken by any means uh it just it it's not bad it's just disappointing I'm, I'm not angry i'm just disappointed right it could have been so much more and i know servios could have done better with it you know the coolest part the best part that i had it made me feel good is i saw a letter from maggie that was in there and she gave me supplies and i just thought man that's cool because she's hot and <laughs> uh i just i just like when she's giving me stuff so that was kind of cool i thought it was right off the bat i had like three letters in there and they gave us extra stuff and it was how i was able to build that that town hall so easy um quick too like you said there's nobody in there so well, that, that part of the game gets cooler as you go, because as you find new survivors, uh, some of them will give you stuff. Others will ask you for things like they'll have a, a certain kind of expertise that can help uh, develop the town. And they'll ask you to keep an eye out for this while you're out on the scavenging run. And when you go over to your little board to pick the area that you want to go to, uh, it'll show you, OK, so and so's thing might be here. Keep an eye out for it. And then you know you'll you'll look for that specific thing as you're running through the uh through the uh level and uh it, it adds another layer to the uh gameplay that's pretty cool yeah that is pretty cool yeah i got lost a couple times man it's not easy there's there's a lot of areas to roam around or you know there's a, places to go in check inside that door and then you find yourself trapped and you're screwed yeah, there's multiple ways through, and there's multiple ways uh, that are dead end, right? So you, you kind of have to stay as far ahead of the wave as you can, while in the meantime picking up stuff as you're going. So um, because you have to you have to be ready for a dead end at all times. So you have to be ready to fight your way back through some walkers 
and maybe dive into the red zone for a half a second to get out. What did you think when you um, got to that first part where you were in the story and you were Daryl? Um, and he says, ah, oh, you know, I was looking for weapon. You grab your knife and there's like, there was a point when there was like 20 zombies or something there. And I, I couldn't, I had to, I was literally just having to run and push and try to push my way through there. Cause there's, there's too many, dude. I didn't, I couldn't get, I like, killed them. Yeah. There's just too many, dude. <laughs> I think I might've I separa- been I, I, I separated them. I, uh. I progress slowly, and like I mentioned a moment ago, I try to draw a couple off at a time and take care of them that way. But at the very end, uh, I had like maybe six or so of them that crowded the trail. I did push my way to the other side of those, but then I turned around and, and, and killed them. As you can grab me. them around the neck and throw them, and so I think that's where that knife thing was happening because like you can grab them and throw them pretty far, so I'm assuming that... Uh, at least that's what I was doing. Well, that and I'd already uh, upgraded the knife uh, by the time I went in there as well. So, like attacking them with the knife, I uh, had a good chance to slow them down for three seconds. So even just hitting them with the knife uh, would kind of it makes this aura come around them, and they kind of move in slow motion for a minute, okay. uh, which is which can be helpful in a horde situation. All right. Well, I haven't put as much time into this as i have saints and sinners if i was putting one next to each other the other i would prefer with saints and sinners oh, um yeah. on almost everything as far as g- gameplay man the knife even though like i they fixed the knife issue i like the way of course it's different mechanics as far as the weapons but i like the way that like a specific knife goes in easier comes out easier um you know and and just every the way that they did it they just nailed it dude and uh it kind of sucks for a game like this that's not bad but it's just not it's not it's i'll tell you what man uh i saw gamer tag today he did a, a review of that zombie land game uh which is an arcade style zombie shooter and he gave it a very positive review i was surprised um because to me this looks like a better game than that zombie land game i mean really? i just gotta be honest yeah i haven't like, seen uh, it i mean it's a it's a time based arcade shooter. It's a wave shooter, um, and it's based on clearing the levels as fast as you can. Um, headshots slow the clock down, and it's a competition leaderboard based thing. But you know, graphic. I mean, it's a basic gameplay mechanic, and it's not anything to write home about from a graphical standpoint either. Uh, I feel like this is a deeper game and has more nuance to it. And that's, of course, without playing the other one. So, I mean, I'm talking out of my ass a little bit. Yeah. Well, I just want to hire that actor that did Rick's voice for everything now. This is <laughs> amazing. Actually, like, it's not that he was bad. It's just he's not Rick. No, exactly. He's just not Andrew Lincoln. Yeah. And it's not his fault. Anyway, I think uh, we've said enough about this, uh, and I think it's going to wrap us up. Uh, again, the long and short of it is Cosmo Dread, cool. Go pick it up. Crashland, awesome. You better go pick it up. Uh, save Vin VR. Link is in the description. And uh, Walking Dead, I mean, if you want to drop $14 on it, uh, you might like it. I think it's pretty decent. Don't buy it at full price. You're going to be very upset. I think maybe not. Maybe if you just, there's got to be people that just loved it, right? For 30 bucks, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know that Kenty Pooh really enjoyed it and he was excited to hear that you were going to play it. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So he wanted to know what you thought about it because he really enjoyed it. He beat it. He, he loved it. So I just, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just the, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners ruined it for me. <laughs> maybe. You know? Maybe that's it. Yeah anyway let us know what you think down in the comments down below let me know what you think should i get be haptic suit should i get a wheel and pedals should i get a force tube let me know in the comments down below and uh again uh even if you don't care about any of this shit we gotta fight the algorithm right and the only way we can fight it off is with your comments so just write anything down there i don't give a shit what it is put anything down there and uh, I will reply to it unless it's uh, 
Unless it's spam. Then we're going to report mm -hmm. you. Yeah, we're going to report your ass. Quick. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, if you're new to the channel, click the big red button. Click the bell to stay up with all of our content. Stay on the lookout for uh, my very next run of Cosmo Dread, which I'm going to go do right now. I'm going to record it. It'll be up on the channel tomorrow. Uh, so be sure you've got that red button and bell click so you don't miss that. Um, again, for those of you who've been doing all this stuff for the longest time, if you want to do a little something extra, you can support us on Patreon. $3 a month gives you access to our weekly show notes, special updates from yours truly. When I get inside information, I share it with the patrons and exclusive access to the always awesome money show which uh, which is planned to be monthly, but sometimes you get it more often, sometimes you get it less. But it's always cool, and it's certainly worth your $3 per month investment. Yep, absolutely. Last but not least, there's an invitation down below, an invitation into our home. And we don't invite you into our home lightly, friends. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to talk VR, if you want to talk life, if you just want to talk, you can do that on our Discord server. Invitation in the description. Uh, click on it. Come home. Yeah, we miss you. Yeah, all the best people are there for sure. Your mother misses you. Come home. Yeah, that's where my mom hangs out, dude. She's there all the time. <laughs> anyway, with all that said, friends, we'd like to thank you all once again for watching. For Roots, I'm Wes. We'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy. Bye now.